Hello Weekend Warriors and welcome back to the workshop. Uh, today's video I'm going to use to replace a whole bunch of the early, earlier videos I made on building screen printing equipment because, well, my screen printing equipment has evolved. Now, the first uh, press I built for YouTube uh, was a tabletop fixed platen press. And let's take a quick look at that press. Okay, that press was, was cool. It allowed me to do multicolor registration. Uh, unlike the carousel press I built earlier, it was easy to store. And, uh, well, for a couple of shirt runs, it was fun to use. But those shirt runs taught me a couple of things. Um, one of which was that underscreen microtuners can be a bit of a pain to use sometimes. Now, I use multiple size screens. Uh, a lot of people just use big screens and that's fine. But depending on the size of print I'm doing, I'll change the screen size that I'm using. Well, uh, what that does, what these underscreen tuners do, is it, it limits where in the screen I can put a design. If I want to do a left chest print, I got to put the left chest print up in the, this area here. Um, if I want to do a main body print, I've got to put it in the center. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a uh, skinny, wide, it doesn't matter. It's got to be pretty well centered because these underscreen tuners don't allow you to move the screen on the platen. Unlike my rotary press uh, or my, my single color drop frame press where I could loosen up the clamps and move the position of the screen on the platen, these underscreen tuners don't let that happen. At the same time, um, if, I am, if I'm reburning a screen, anytime I have to process a screen, these tuners have to come off because in the drying box that I use, it doesn't slide in. It, it won't fit the extra, extra depth of the tuner and the tuners sit where the rails are for the uh, for the drying box. And then when it comes to registration, if I pre-register using the tuners to then coat, wash out, and pardon me, to then wash, burn, wash out, and dry the screen, I have to take the tuners off and then put them back on and then do the slight tweaks it takes to get it back in place. So because of the underscreen tuners, I started handling my screens a lot more times than I wanted to. So they were a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so I wanted to go on to a, a different registration method. And in wanting to go on to that registration method or, or trying to figure out the way to do it, I had to make some changes to the press itself. So first thing I did is I got rid of that hard mounted plunger block and created just a mounting block that goes all the way across the back of the press. Then on top of that block, I was then able to start mounting registration caps. Now, the registration caps allow me to use pretty much any registration method that's come up. Uh, so let me do a quick look around here. Ah, there's one of them. Okay, one of those, if somebody really wants to use underscreen microtuning, by making a cap with the hard mounted plunger, we can do the underscreen micro tuning and still have the spring loaded plunger to push the, the screen up against the platen. I don't use this anymore. That's, that's just out of it. I don't use underscreen micro tuning anymore. But sometimes I will do the classic single color. Uh, single color mount where you take the screen and mount it into the L bracket with a C clamp so you can do your print and then pick the screen up and lock it out of your way process the t-shirt then drop it back down and do your next print etc so just for speed sake when doing single color prints I made a cap that will hold the screen like that and then method for doing multicolor prints, I went to the classic three-point registration system. 
And let's take a, a closer look at that. So I'm going to move the camera and let you see that. So hang on. All right. The three-point registration system consists of two points for the y-axis adjustments. Now, there are still adjusters mounted on the screen, but they're mounted on the back of the screen and don't interfere with the bottom or the top. They're just on the back of the frame, and I'll show you those in just a moment. So we have two points of registration for those. And then the third point is for x-axis adjustments, and it's only a single point in the middle. So, grabbing a screen that has three bolts on it, two of them in the y-axis and one of them pointing in the x-axis. Let me widen back a little bit here. Oops. Here we go. So, we got two for the y-axis, one for the x-axis, so you adjust this for adjusting this direction, you adjust these for the in and out direction. Now, the one twist I added to this that I have never seen before, but that doesn't mean somebody else didn't think of it, is using rare earth magnets at the registration points. Uh, I got these out of a couple of old dead hard drives. So, I already spent the money on the hard drives. It didn't cost me anything for, from a dead hard drive. So now, when I put these into place, Okay, I'll lift that up and pull. Uh, there we go. You can see it doesn't come off real easy. So I don't have to rely on me holding it into place with one hand and pulling my print with the other. I don't have to worry about it. It's not going to move on accident. So with the use of the rare earth magnets, I've got a good locked screen and I can do this with as many screens for as many colors as I want to use. Let me see, did I get a good shot on that? Yeah, I got a pretty good shot on that. So, I put down a sample of my print on the platen. I can then register each color to that, that sample that's on the platen. And I can, putting my film positives on, once I do it and I burn the screen, as long as I haven't touched these registration points, it's going to be in the same place as the first time I did it. So after I've burned the screen and washed the design out, I should be pre-registered. And I don't have to go back and do it again. So I'm not handling the screen as many times before I start printing. Now, unlike a rotary press where you're limited to the number of colors for the number of print heads, this one I'm numbered to I'm limited to the number of colors as I have screens to work with. Um, the only drawback is you have to lift and handle each one of those screens multiple times. So, um, oh, and of course, the, the key part of that is with this registration cap, since I've got slots cut in it, if I want to do a left chest but I got a sweet spot in the middle of the uh, screen, I can put that left chest in the middle of the screen and then move it till it's in the left chest position. If I've got a left chest, a left chest, and then another left chest, well, we took care of that by adding some slots to the table. So two modifications and all of a sudden I'm adjustable all over the place and I can decide where on the screen I put the uh, design and then adjust the press to place that design in the right spot on the t-shirt. So adjustability, versatility. We can go three different registration methods. We can use the screen, all of the screen that we want to use. I'm not limited where I can put the, uh, the uh, design.
So a few quick modifications and we're in great shape. Except for one thing. And let me uh, move around a bit and we'll talk about that one thing. So that one thing that I was talking about, that one thing is this base table. Now you see we've got a table sitting underneath here and anytime I load a shirt onto the platen, that t-shirt has to rub up against the table. Now that's, that's standard with pretty much any tabletop press. Why? Because you're working in a small space. The, these kind of presses are designed for the people that are working inside their house, in their bathroom, uh, up to the kitchen counter, on the dining room table, some place where they can't clamp it down, they've got limited, limited space to work, and uh, yeah, they work great for that, great for that application. Uh, and that's why this one, the plans for this one are still on the website, because there are people that need this type of press. Um, and what you do, you lay down a piece of anti-skid, that stuff that keeps your uh, rugs from slipping out underneath you when you step on them. And it doesn't need to be clamped down, that stuff will keep it from moving when you're, when you're working on it. So that's terrific. However, I didn't like that, and I'm not allowed to print in the house. I'm not allowed to bring ink into the house, because my wife is smarter than me. I wanted a design that would give me the security and feeling that I had when I was working on my carousel press whose arm hang, hung out in open space, like you might see here. So I did a web search and I came across a design on the site web 2 And here's a picture of that design. All right, that was a really stout design and it was a great starting place for me. So I went from there and I started redesigning it to fit my needs and fit the, the registration caps that I designed for this one so I could use it on this one. And what I came up with was the box design for the back. Instead of having a table underneath it, I put a one by six underneath and stuck about three quarters of an inch to an inch out the back end so I could clamp it to my tables. Because once again, I'm working in a workshop where I can clamp to all my work surfaces. I redesigned their, their platen arm Instead of being two 2x4s two side by side, it's just a single 2x4 hanging out. I just made sure it was very, very straight. And once again, I included the capability of using all the registration caps that I designed for this one. Of course, the only one that I normally use, unless I'm doing a whole bunch of single color prints, is the magnetic registration. I don't deal with underscreen at all anymore. Because once again, When you can lock your screen in, that tightly, you don't need to hold it in from the sides. You've got all the capability here, and then being able to move that screen around on the platen, of course, makes a big difference too. Now, I named this press the T-Press, because, well, when it's not loaded up, it looks like a T. So where was I? Got rid of their screen handling equipment. I'm not using jiffy clamps on the top. I'm using registration caps. I can clamp it down. My platen hangs out over empty air. Now why is that important to me? Well, if I can get ink on something such as a tabletop or a little bit of grease or a little bit of dirt, I can drag a t-shirt through it. On this one, there is nothing underneath there for me to get dirt on or anything like that. Now, I know you're supposed to work clean and you follow all kinds of precautions to do it, but accidents happen. And if anybody can do it, well, I'm the guy. So when a t-shirt's loaded on here, it's not dragging on a tabletop. So I've got the security that I'm looking for. These guys, like I said, great if you're working on indoors and on a flat surface you can't clamp to. If you're in a workshop, the T-Press. Both designs are available on the uh, website, www.craftedbychristopher.com. They're free. Be my guest and download. Um, any accessories that I've, I've made, plans are on the website for free. 
any techniques required to build these things, the technique is in video on the channel and described on the, on the website. So, uh, for cutting the slots in the, in the registration cap, for making the, the, uh, the thumb knobs, the star knobs, if you will, uh, securing the, uh, the uh, magnets from the hard drives, it, it's all there. It's all available to you. So that's all I've got for now. Now, this, of course, this video is going to replace, I don't know, eight or nine videos that are, that are hanging on the website right now. Um, if you really want to see those videos, send me an email and I'll make the link available to you, but I'm not leaving them up. Um, so that's about all I've got for now. You all, uh, until I see you next time, you all keep up the good fight and I'll see you next time I do a video. Bye.